Hey guys, it's Melissa here at Agrestic Acres and as you can see my husband is out today on this freezing cold day and he is tilling up our garden area. We have this area here which is in our front yard but off to the side of our driveway so it's kind of out of the way and kind of wasted space. So we are putting a big garden in. It is going to be about 43 by 100 feet total so really good size. Um, our previous garden last year was 500 square feet, so it's going to be over eight times as big as we did in the past. And this ground here is perfect because it's fairly close to the house, and it also is flat in the sun. There's no trees around. We had the soil tested, so we're going to add the amendments, and I'll talk about that in a later video. Garden tilling is complete. It took my husband maybe at most an hour to do this whole area, which is over 4,000 square feet. And we were able to borrow the tiller from a friend so we didn't have to buy one or rent one which was great one thing i did want to mention is that before we started digging we had to call and have our utility lines marked it was a few weeks ago but you can kind of see the spray paint there but if you're going to be digging a big garden area definitely have those marked they come out um, just in a matter of days and it's free so we had that done and the next thing we're going to do is add some amendments to the soil we had our soil tested we um, just Googled the local extension office and we sent it off to a university um, nearby and it was only $10. They tested the soil and told us exactly what we needed to add. Our soil is actually really good considering it's just had been here and you know, this is our first year in this house. So we have to add some lime and some 51010. So a few bags of um, each and we're gonna mix that in and get this ready to go. Probably get peas here in the ground shortly. Now I'm going to take you inside and show you some things we've been working on inside, kind of playing catch up with our videos today. We've just been busy getting stuff done. All right, so I'm down the basement now. It is quite noisy between the ducks and the chickens and the children above me running around. But I wanted to show you our indoor greenhouse grow area is what you want to call it. Um, this is just a rack from Lowe's and then we got three fluorescent lights. One is currently not turned on right now because we don't have any seeds there. We had a um, greenhouse in front of the window in the previous house, but this house doesn't have any really direct sunlight because of the way the sun goes across the house the opposite direction. So we set this up and so far it's doing great. As you can see, we have lots of stuff growing. We do have this um, space heater here, which definitely helped the growth. But unfortunately, now that I have two brooder lights and these lights on, and we only have one outlet down here in the basement, it's not really wired with electricity. Um, it trips the breaker when I turn on the heater. So we haven't been using that for the last week or so. So down here we have some flowers, some bunny tails. We have broccoli cauliflower, just a real variety of stuff. Mostly over here is the tomatoes, which were only planted maybe a little over a week ago. Those are coming in nicely. I was growing some sprouts here for the chickens. And then up here we had the first one I did which wasn't doing as great for some reason. I have some ground cherries, lots of peppers here, and then some lemon mint, some herbs, eggplant, some special Thai peppers. I'm going to plant a lot more today and I'll show you my seed boxes in just a little bit. One real quick thing I wanted to show you um, lastly is these boxes that I have to organize my seeds. They are just from the craft store, you know, Michael's, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, whatnot. They're just two simple photo boxes. And in one of them I have seeds that get planted directly outdoors. And the other one I have seeds that are started indoors. I just did this this year where I separated them and that has been a huge help because it's exhausting to have to go through your seeds, especially when you're first learning and remember what gets planted ahead of time, etc. So these are just some of the categories I have here. You know, beans, I think there's up here, carrots, corn, you can see. Just the ones that we are using here at our home and these are the ones that go start inside. I did it narrow it down this year to peppers like medium and regular and then large and small tomatoes because sometimes I end up with way too many small and so it's just really good to have the seeds separated especially for some of the more common ones that you plant a lot of. Another way that I keep organized is I have a little list that I made just for my indoor seeds what gets started when just kind of a basic thing to help me stay reminded. I also have things that are direct seeded list, which is before the frost, you know, as soon as possible, after the frost, then when it's warm, just to kind of keep you 
on track of everything that's happening. So that's what I use. I think it's a simple, inexpensive method. Um, and these dividers are just construction paper that I've, of course, laminated and written on with a Sharpie, which is actually erasable with dry erase. So that's easy. Thanks for checking in. Um, hopefully this helps you stay organized with your seeds. All right, I think that's it for today. We've been busy, but I'm glad we got caught up with everything that's been going on. I'm off to clean the chicken coop and the ducks and all that fun stuff and plant a bunch more seeds today. We appreciate you watching, following along on our journey, and we'll be back soon with more videos and to keep you updated. Have a great day.